Hey there, I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. And today we're taking a look at Letter Jam by CGE. Letter Jam is a word deduction cooperative game in which all players are going to have a mix of letters in front of them. Uh, it's specifically chosen by the player on their left that makes up some kind of word, whether that be a four letter, five letter, six letter word, depending on what difficulty you're wanting to play. And uh, players are going to be giving clues looking at everyone else's letters but not getting to look at their own letters and hopefully your teammates clues will help you to discern what the letters are in front of you so that you can unscramble them to figure out what your word is let's take a look at it in more detail down below and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer all right here's letter jam from cge let me show you guys this letter detection cooperative game in which you are going to be working with your teammates trying to help each other figure out your secret letters that make up a special word now in this game, you can have your word assigned to you by the player on uh, your either your left or your right, or you can use the app that comes uh, with this game. You can download it in the App Store. Let me show you guys how this particular app works. You're just going to tap New Game, and you're going to tell it how many players. And in this example, I'm going to say we have three players. And you are going to choose a difficulty le level. Now, I do recommend when you are just learning this game to try it with the simple mode or maybe even the easy to kids mode. Uh, the more letters you add to your uh, special words, the more difficult it's going to be. And you'll tell it to continue and you give it uh, permission to uh, do all of this. And it's going to say, put your device on the table and uh, don't scan directly below a light source. Now you're going to hold the cards above the camera on the front of your phone and it's going to assign the letters to specific players and you will uh, say done and go on to your next letter and let's see what it does with this one. Oh, we're going to put it over here too and it will make up words for each of the players as you go through your cards here. Now on to how this game works let me show you guys how a round works and then i'll explain what are some of the things you might want to know when teaching this with non-gamers so the idea behind this game is that you are trying to give clues to your teammates as you can see everyone else's letter but you cannot see your own letter and the letters that you have in front of you are all scrambled up to make a word and in this case i'm using five letters here now uh how this works there is no player order all players can go in any order they want uh, but a player will say i have a clue and the clue that you are giving is some word that you can make with the letters that you see now in this example again this is a three player example we've got player one here player two and i'm player three and uh, these are dummy players in the middle if you look at our scorecard here and this is for a two or three player game you're, you're going to have a number of these piles over here making up uh, the uh, dummy players. Now, uh, they are going, we're going to use their letters so that we can work through their decks of cards because if we get to the bottom of their decks, we get extra clues. That's what these little tokens are here. Now, my word, um, I can use any word that uses those combinations of letters. Um, there is no invalid word. It can be uh, abbreviations. It can be uh, proper nouns. You can use any kind of clue you want, but you are not actually going to say that word. You are just simply going to say, I have a clue that is X number of letters. In this case, my word that I'm thinking of is going to be uh, five letters. And uh, the next thing that I would say is, is how many players real players my particular word is going to help and in this case uh, i would say two because i'm going to use both players here and then i would also say how many dummy players it are involved and so i would tell the players how many of these dummy players now i don't tell anybody who specifically i'm helping or which of the dummy players that i am using i just simply tell them the number and so players will then have to decide, well, who has the best clue and whoever has the best clue, that person is going to give their clue. Now, they're not actually going to say their word. That is extremely important. You never say the word out loud. You use these tokens here to assign the letters. So if in my head I am thinking that my word is going to be uh, debt, let's say, then I am going to assign the first uh, letter here the second letter here to this player the third letter is going to go over here to this player and the last 
cl uh, clue is going to go here with this player. Now, after I have done that, then I take one of these tokens here. If it's the first clue that I have given, I will take a red. And the reason why there are different colors here is because depending on the number of players you have in the game, uh, when a player gives their first clue, they will take a red. And once all the reds are gone, then you can take these green ones in the middle. If ever you are unable to take a token, the game is over and players have to figure out their secret words. Otherwise, they lose. Uh, and so you do want to make sure that everybody is giving clues so that you can get these extra ones here. And as I mentioned, you want to use the dummy players to get through their stacks so that you can get those cl extra clue tokens there. Now, all the other players are going to be looking at the letters that I've assigned, knowing that they don't know what their own letters are, and they're making the best guess off of what they can tell uh, what their particular clue is. And so uh, this player over here knows that the word starts with a D. It also has an, a B in it, and it ends with a T. Now, there's not a vowel that they can tell being used, which would give them a pretty good clue that their letter is a vowel. And so they might be going through the alphabet, putting different vowels in a word that goes D blank B T. Maybe they come to the realization that E works really well in that slot. Now, this particular uh, card right here can be a wild. It can be any letter you want, but I will advise you cautiously use that because the more you use the wild card the more it muddies up your clue and players are not going to be able to figure out what the their particular word is now uh, i can show you my score sheet here and if we were to play a game and we were to keep track of things in round one maybe somebody gave this particular clue ch and then they use my letter twice, which you can do. You can use the same letter more than once. They would just put a three and four token in front of me and then a K. And I would know that uh, maybe E is the best letter that would go there. So you can see I wrote E there. And when you're fairly certain what your letter is, as I wrote here, uh, I think I know that this is an E. Then what you're going to do is you're going to say, well, I think I'm pretty certain what this is. And you're going to place it face down, moving on to the next letter and you will stick that letter again, making sure not to look at it, and then you would continue on with the game. And you can see here that uh, with the next word, I was given an F, an A, and then somebody used my letter, and then a T. I've wrote all the different combinations I can think of, CSR, that I, that's not giving me a whole lot of confidence that I know what that letter is, so maybe I stick with that and I go on to another round and I get this clue. My letter, an O, an L, an O, and then the wild letter in the middle and an S. Well, if I'm just going off of CSR, I know that it's not likely to be R because if I'm thinking the word that they gave is colors, well, then they would have just used my R rather than using the wild. So I'm pretty certain C is the right letter. So I write C there and I put it right here and I go on to the next word. And then after at the end, if I've, if I've worked through all of my letters, then what we do is we try to figure out what our word is and we try to unscramble it. And so looking at my letters here, E, C, K, H, C, I might think that my word might be check. And so I need to unscramble these letters to make the word check. And so I'm going to put that word letter there and I'm going to put, uh, let's see, this letter here and we're going to move this letter here and there we go. And so then if I feel like I'm in the right order, I flip over my letters and hopefully I spell a word. And if so, then I have done my part and I am adding to the team score. And hopefully everyone does their part and figures out their words and you are able to figure out everybody's words. And that's how you win the game. Now, what are some things that you really need to know when teaching this game to non-gamers? Well, number one, the biggest thing is, is that you need to help them understand what is a good clue. And so the best thing is, is a clue that uses a lot of the letters you can see and not using the wild letter. As I've already explained, the more you use this, the more it muddies up your clue. The next thing is, is that if you can use somebody's letter more than once, that can be a very good clue in helping them figure out what their letter is. And uh, obviously, longer clues using more of the letters you can see are better than shorter clues. The other thing is, is that you need to make sure your non-gamer friends know that they have to be given clues as well, that they cannot just sit back and let, watch everybody else give clues because the more you give clues, the less you know about your letters because you're not getting any information on your letters when you're giving clues. You're only giving clues out to other people. 
Now, uh, the last thing that I will say about helping non-gamers understand this game is, is that you are not actually saying the words, as I've already said. This is all just done with the chips, and so you want to make sure that they don't accidentally say the word or that they're saying other people's letters. That can happen in this game. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is the box insert with Letter Jam, which uh, unfortunately there is not a box insert with this game. Uh, it is completely empty. You've got baggies here that you can put some things in. Unfortunately, those uh, scorecards for the player counts, they uh, don't really go in a baggie. If you've got a bigger bag outside of from another game, maybe you can put it in that. Uh, but unfortunately, it's just going to lie flat in the box. It's not too big of a deal, but if you are somebody who is very uh, meticulous with your components and keeping them safe, that might bug you. There you have it. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on Letter Jam. All right, we're back. And now we're going to share our thoughts on Letter Jam from a gamer and non-gamers perspective. Normally, we would show you some gameplay footage while we talk about the game. But as the nature of this game is with the letters facing out towards other people, that's just not really something we could do yeah. too much. Um, so we're just going to share our thoughts on this one. And Sam, let me ask you, what? first of all, what is your thoughts and feelings on word games as a non-gamer? <laughs> I go back and forth. I'm dyslexic and I can't spell well. <laughs> and so in general, I don't do well with these games like Scrabble. I love the idea, but I'm going to yeah. lose. Um, but this game, you know, it, it's four, five, six letter words. Right. Um, so I can spell most of those. <laughs> So. Well, I think that's the thing too, though, because everybody knows Scrabble. Everybody yeah. knows word games and, and they're the simplest kinds of games more, more often than not. And I think for a lot of people, it, it either can go one of two ways. It can be very comforting and welcoming because everybody knows Scrabble yeah. or it can be, well, whoever's got the biggest vocabulary is going to be the winner in yeah. this game. This is a cooperative word game, which you don't find that all too often, I feel like. And so th that, for one, is something that sets this game apart. Yeah. However, I will say, I think this is probably one of the most complex word games yeah. I've ever come across. There's a lot of components there. There's how many times are you allowed to give um, clues. clues. Yeah. Um, the, the rules to what those clues can be. Yeah, the changing of the... Um, once you use those. Right, yeah. the letters kind of rearranging and come yeah. swapping out. Yeah. yeah, well, and then you yourself, your word is in front of you upside down. Right, yeah. And, but and, and you don't know what it is. And it's not in the right order either. Right. And so you have to keep your letters in the right order and then at the same time, eventually unscram yeah. unscrabble them, which proved to be the most difficult part for me. <laughs> I had both times I had all my letters correct and could not could figure not out. Couldn't unscramble it. Yeah, but my best friend, <laughs> Looked at my letters and she said, that's your word. Knew it immediately. Yep. I cannot, my brain can't <laughs> unscrabble words, apparently. So, so folks, what I want you to get from what we're saying here in the beginning on our review of this is, is that this is not your typical word game. Yeah. This is kind of your, your next level in deduction and complexity when it comes to a word game. Now, that being said, is this so complex that you can't figure it out or it doesn't work well with non-gamers? No, you can. It's just going to take you some time to really kind of get in the swing of how this game operates and works. Um, it's just kind of a different type of yeah. game with the different mechanics that are going on. As you kind of maybe picked up in the rules portion of this video, there are quite a few rules. So it is a little uh, finicky, a little, uh, you know, convoluted, um, maybe even bloated with the rules. But uh, all in all, I thought it was a pretty fun experience. Yeah, what, what did you think? We had a really good time. We were able to play it with two of our best friends and we all enjoyed it, I think. Yeah, this is one that I've played at uh, as, as the highest uh, player count that it'll go, six players. We actually played seven players where two people were a team together. Um, and that that's one of the most fun experiences I've had with a word game at that player count um, because everybody was just really involved. Everybody was really trying to figure yeah. out their words, trying to give really good clues. And and that's just a fun experience when you know everybody's invested yeah. and it being a cooperative game, you, you really got to be invested yeah. if you want to do well, because it's not an easy game yeah. by any well, I means. I will say too, like you have to make sure everyone really understands the rules. Yeah. Because I made the mistake of 
trying saying out loud, okay, well, we have done, 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 not <laughs> yeah. realizing that, well, I just told everybody what their letters were. Right. <laughs> and, and that is one thing I do think I, we need to say in our review on this game is, is that we've played this several times now, and I still don't know if we've played a full entire game without having made some, some mistake yeah. or some cheating but in it's some just, fashion. It's still... It, it has all the rules and everything, but it still has a feeling of a light game. Like it's, depending yeah. on who you're playing with, I right? Think. But it's still once you once you understand how the game works, it, it's it's really simple. It, getting to a point where you're really skilled at giving good clues that help everybody to figure out their their words is not very easy, yeah. and yeah. and it's a challenging experience. But man, is yeah. it so fun to well, really try to and you feel like you have a really good clue, but then like. <laughs> Somebody ends up having the um, the wild card, wild card, and their their letters right next next to each other. It, yeah. So they have like T H blank blank, and they're like, like "That's what? not fair." But that, the other that could person be anything. has right an easier go. At so it. your clue can be, you know, you could think, "Well, this clue is really going to help everybody at the table," when it really only helps Depending out maybe on the one order person. That letter falls. Yeah. So so this really challenges your thinking. It challenges your way of of perceiving what what your clues can be for yeah. other people. You really kind of have to put yourself in other people's shoes to try and really do well in yeah. this game. So all in all, it was a really unique, fun experience that yeah. uh, is challenging and leaves you wanting to keep coming back and trying it again. So uh, Sam, let me talk to you about you being a non-gamer. Um, I really kind of feel like this is a game that works well with non-gamers. However, I think if everybody at the table is a non-gamer, that kind of just getting over the initial learning curve yeah. can be a, quite a challenge. What yeah. are your thoughts on I that? I agree with that, but I don't. I think the actual once once they have the rules, it's it's an easy one for gamers and non-gamers. Okay, so. there you go. There you go. It feels almost like a party game. It well, it does. Yeah, and and because it plays up to six people, you know that is kind of a larger group. Um, it definitely does have that, and it's cooperative. So again, everybody's you know trying to uh, work together and yeah. get that synergy working yeah. with this one. So uh, let's uh, let's get into our pros and cons when it comes to this game, Sam. Uh, you as the non-gamer, what were the things you really enjoyed about Letter Jam? Um, it was it was unique. I've played different letter guessing, word guessing type games, um, but this had a unique aspect to it. Only you know, figuring out one letter at a time, unscrambling it, knowing what other people's letters were. It just, it felt unique and it was pretty easy to understand as well. Okay, all right. So Sam, was there anything about this game that you didn't really like? I wouldn't say not like, I would just say there's definitely some people that are gonna excel at this game more than others. Yeah. Some people's brains just work better and can fill in those blanks. Mine right. is not one, but I still really enjoyed it. It didn't, you know, it, it being a cooperative game, I think helps. I yeah. think if it wasn't a cooperative game, I would have lost every time. Yeah, absolutely. Myself. Yeah, so, I, I agree with that. The fact that this is cooperative and everybody's working together, it gives you that sense of well, maybe we can get this yeah. because we're all working together. Yeah. Um, if if you know if it was a somehow if it was a competitive game, man, that would be a really harsh experience. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, uh, kind of going in with what Sam said there, that there are going to be some people that do better. Um, man, that is so true with this game. You're gonna you're you're more than likely, especially in your first playthroughs, you're gonna experience maybe one or two people in your play group that just really struggle with figuring out a good clue to give. And so when they are giving clues, they might not be the best clues that help everyone. Um, and they also are, are maybe going to be very challenged at figuring out what their letters are based off the clues given to them. And that's just kind of the way it goes with this game. Yeah. Because like Sam said, there's just going to be some people that are intuitive and be able to pick up on that sort of thing. And there's just going to be those who don't. Yeah. And I don't think that that's going to be specific to gamers yeah. or non-gamers. It's going to be specific to just how people's brains How does your work. brain work? So people right. may come to this game and not really enjoy it because it's just frustrating for them. But I don't think that that has any relation to if they are a gamer or not right. a gamer. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Um, I still feel like it's a very enjoyable yeah. experience regardless of that. Um, it's one that leaves me wanting to try and get that word figured out yeah. because 
I still haven't won this game. We've yeah. played it probably, I don't know. I've played it probably six times at this point, and I still haven't won yet. So <laughs> uh, I, I, I do believe you can win. I've seen people figure out their words, but I've not seen everybody at the table figure yeah. out their word together. So um, let's get into our scores on this one. Uh, Sam, scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. Where does this one fall for you? Um, I'd probably give it a 7.6. Oh, I thought you were going to say exactly what I was thinking cool. in my head. Uh, I'm at a 7.8 on okay. this one. 7.8 for me. Why, why 7.6? I mean, I think it's a great game. It's really enjoyable. I think it's one that play once or twice, but yeah. then your brain hurts. And so you need to put <laughs> it away and bring something else out. Right, yeah. Uh, I, I get that. Uh, like we were saying, I think this is one that after you play it once or twice, it really starts to, you, you get in a groove and you start to see how maybe you can give better clues or yeah. how you can, uh, you know, people are giving you clues and how you can pick up more on what letters you're getting. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like this is one that you get more skilled at the more you play it. And uh, you can really start to develop a nice teamwork in this game. So all in all, quite the fun experience with the word deduction game party elements going along with it. So that is Letter Jam from CGE. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.